Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, I'm Asim Abbas. Uh, this is tutorial number one. It is about how to model and analyze beam in SAP 2000. The main objective of this tutorial is the student will learn how to model and analyze beam subjected to different kind of loadings. Right? For this purpose, I will solve a few example of beam in SAP 2000. Fine. Before solving example, I will quickly go through the general procedures used to solve particular structure in SAP 2000. Fine. Okay, this is a general procedure. This procedure is mainly divided into three different phases. Phase 1, Phase 2 and Phase 3. Phase 1 is also called pre-processing phase where the structure different structure properties are defined and assigned like in this phase uh, you will create a new model uh, then you will define grid system and edit grid system then define different material properties uh, then you will define member cross-section then you will define load pattern load cases load combination and also drawing different members, assign joints and assign load. Coming toward phase two. It is analysis phase uh, and it is mainly related to the analysis of structures that is modeled in phase one where different load cases are set to run. Fine. And it is actually uh, a bridge between phase one and phase two. Now come towards phase three. It is called post processing phase. It is related to the analysis results of model and its designing, where analysis and design reports are developed or generated. This is all about the procedure while working in the SAP 2000. Now come towards solution of different example. This is example number one. In this example, a continuous beam is subjected to uniformly distributed load, uniform distributed dead load, and uniform distributed live load. Fine. And the cross section is given by 18 by 30 inches. And the other properties uh, are given here, uh, which is the concrete property. The modulus of elasticity is 3600 KSI, Poisson ratio is 0.2, compressive strength is 4 KSI, and steel yield strength is 60 KSI. And the load combination is 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. Okay, we will solve this example in SAP for the combination of 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load to create new model. Okay, how you will create new model? How you will access a new model? You will go to the file. From file, you will click on the new model. Okay, so the new model dialog box will open. Right? Now from here, you will set your unit as per the requirement. Okay, I will keep my units keep fit. Then you will click on the grid only. Right? And then you will decide, you will define, you will enter the different of different number of grid lines in X direction, then number of grid line in the Y direction, then number of grid line in the Z direction. Similarly, you will also enter the grid spacing. Fine. Keep in mind this thing. A grid line is required where you want to assign support condition, where you want to apply load, where the cross section is different. Fine. So in our case, in this case, how many grid line we required in this particular direction, which is actually the X direction, we required three grid line in the X direction. This is one, this is two, and this is three. Okay. What is the spacing between these the, the, the grid lines? These are the 24 feet and 24 feet. Fine. Okay. Here we will, decide, we will define three grid lines in the x direction. There is no need of any grid line in the y direction. Keep it one. 
and there is also no need of grid line in the exact direction keep it one and the spacing is actually 24 so rest spacing will also be kept one feet okay now the grid lines are developed the grid lines are not visible in this view uh, which is the xy plane so you will switch to the xz plane where you can see the grid lines okay now the grid lines are visible a b and c after defining uh, the grid lines now you will define the other properties okay first of all we will define the material properties click on the define then click on the materials okay this window will appear then we will add new materials from this add new material tab you will click on the add new material initially you will change the name of this material for example this is concrete 4 ksi fine change the term material type here to concrete instead of steel now here you can also change your units as per your requirement i will change unit to keep inches fine okay the this is the weight and mass property i will keep it the same as it is uh, given here and i will change the isotropic property data from here the elastic modulus is actually 36000 and poisson ratio is 0.2 and uh, the specified concrete compressive strength is 4 ksi right click on ok this material is defined with the name of concrete 4 ksi click on ok now next step is to define sectional property okay so click on the define tab then click on the section property then click on the frame section fine now here you can add new property click on the add new property tape then from the material section from the frame section property type you will change it from steel to the concrete okay in our case the cross section of the beam is rectangular okay so click on the rectangular so this window appeared from here you will change the name of your section it is actually 18 cross 30 fine and also change the materials property from here which is concrete 4 ksi right now what is the depth of concrete section it is actually 30 inches to so 30 the way units in feet so put value in feet 30 divided by 12 fine and the width is 18 so 18 by 12 so the value is converted to the feet now from the concrete reinforcement because this frame section is beam so change concrete reinforcement from column to beam fine and this is the concrete cover uh, to longitudinal rebar and which is we keep it 2.5 2.5 feet which is 0 0.2021 feet okay okay now your frame section is defined click on ok now next step is to define the load pattern click on the define then click on the load pattern actually in our beam uh, we have to define we have to apply dead load as well as in a live load so you will define two load pattern what is dead load which is already by default defined and we will just define live load so change load pattern name from here and then type to load and then add this property fine now you will define your load cases 
Fine. And dead and live load pattern is already defined and these load cases is automatically generated over here. But we can develop a combination of load cases. Add on new load case and set for example this is, is load case one and you want to do static analysis and it is a linear as well fine from here i will add dead and live combination fine click on ok now define load combination and click on the define then go to the load combination and add new combo okay click on the add new combo define the name of this combination for example its name is 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load fine and the combination is dead 1.2 add it and also live and its skill factor is 1.6 okay click on okay this combination is defined click on okay fine now we are in position to draw this be your element so how you will draw your element actually this is a frame element so you will draw this by using a frame element tool okay from drawing from draw to menu you can draw this element how okay just click on the draw so this is a draw frame public cable okay and below this there is a quick draw frame as well from here you can just draw your element with single click but you will use this one draw frame fine you can also access this draw frame element tool from this side toolbar okay from here you just click on this so this window will appear keep in mind in this section property you will change the section which section you want to draw okay you we want to draw beam 18 cross 30 inches so click on this and there's just you then you will draw this element point to point click on the first uh, there is three supports at location a hinge support is there at location b and c there is a roller support okay how you will assign these supports first of all at location a you will select this particular point where you want to assign support then go to assign then join then restraints okay this tool will appear from here you will assign your support okay this is hinge support select this hinge support and okay fine this support is created next two supports are roller support to select both joint at a time and then go to the assign then joint then restraints then click on the roller support okay supports are created now next step is to assign load okay as per the example the load is applied uniformly distributed throughout this beam and the magnitude is 2.2 kip per foot which is dead load and 1.6 kip per foot live load okay now we are in position to assign these two loads fine for load assignment select both frame element then go to the assign then go to the frame load okay from that frame load go to the distributed load so this window will appear so from here first of all you will set your units so we your unit keep in fit it is okay now from load pattern select the load pattern okay first we will apply 2.2 kip per foot dead load then we will apply 
keep per foot live load. Okay, it is in the direction of gravity and it is actually the force. So from here, you will apply a uniformly distributed load. What is the magnitude of this dead load? It is 2.2. Click on OK. Once you apply 2.2 dead load, then again select these two and as apply or assign live load. Then go to the assign, then go to the frame load, then distributed load. Again, from here, click it is 1.6 but keep in mind you will change the load pattern from dead to the live fine okay how you will check the load is applied both load are applied click on this uh, frame element and do right click fine from this window you can just click on the loads from this load you can see load pattern dead and it is applied start force is 2.2 at zero pole location then an add point it is 2.3 24 feet fine similarly uh, load pattern that is the live load and it is applied at 1.6 and 1.6 fine so both dead and live loads are applied once you applied the the loads now we are in position to run analysis how you will run analysis you can run analysis either click on analyze menu then run analysis and you can also perform run analysis by pressing f5 it is a shortcut for run analysis right click on the run analysis so now from here you want to set load cases to run right so in this case i want to run all the load key uh, load cases so just click on the run now okay before it give you the result you will save your file Now the uh, analysis is completed. So after completion of analysis, uh, we are entered into phase three. In this phase, you will see different results. How? Okay, the result are accessed from the display menu. It is a display menu. From this menu, you just go click on the display, then you can come to the show forces and stresses, right? If you want to see forces or stresses at joint, so you just click on the joints. So this window will appear and you want to check the result for the combination of 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load or you also check your result for dead and live separately. So we want to check low the result for 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. So I will select it from here and just click on this. So it will give you the reactions fine now if you want to see if you want to check the shear force and the bending moment so again click on the analysis analyze sorry a display and from the display option show forces and stresses then click on the frame and cables frames are big cables right from here you can see different shear forces and bending moment diagram fine if you want to see the bending moment so click on the M33 and from here you if you want to see uh, values on the diagram so click on the show values on diagram and click on OK. So from here you can check the bending movement diagram along with values. Okay if you want to check the shear force again you can click on the display the cables from here you can check shear to two. Click. So this is the shear force diagram, right? You can also access uh, these different results from this this menu from here, right? You can click on the joint. You can see the reactions, and from frame and cable, you can check 
and other results. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, this is all about example number one. This is example number two. Uh, now I will solve this example in SEP 2000. Uh, it is a simply supported beam subjected to different kind of loads, including the uniformly varying load at two different locations, and there is a point load as well. So the concrete properties is given over here, and the cross section is actually 12 by 14. And the load combination is 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. Now I will solve this example in the SEP 2000. Okay, the very first step is to create a new model. Just click on the file, then click on the new model. In this window, uh, you will first of all set your units as per the requirement and then click on the grid only. Now we will check how many grid lines we required in the different direction and what will be the spacing of these grading, grid lines. Okay, as I told you earlier that the grid lines are created where supports, supports are required, where the load is varying, okay, where the cross section is varying. But here, there is a two supports and load is also varying at different location. So now, how many grid line we required in this X direction? Fine. So this is grid line one we required, and this is grid line second one, and this is third one, because the load is varying in this between these two grid lines. Also, we required grid line this at that location, and we required grid line at this location as well, because the load is varying in this in these between these two points. We can also create grid line at this particular point and at this particular point, but in SEP 2000 you have there is option you can apply trapezoidal load which is varying at four different locations. So that's why I'm only defining two grid line for this particular load. Okay, uh, we will define a grid line for this point load as well and for this support condition. For, okay, so how many grid line in the x direction? One, two, three. Four, five, six, and seven. Fine. So we will define seven grid line in x direction. Okay. What will be the spacing between these grid lines? Fine. Initially, we cannot add different spacing at a time, but later on, we can edit the spacing as per the requirement. Now I will define seven grid line in the X direction. So there is no grid line required in the Y and Z direction. So I will keep five feet spacing randomly and later on we can edit the spacing between these grid line. Click on OK. Okay, the grid line will not be visible in this particular plane. So you will switch to XZ plane where you can see the grid points. Okay, now we will edit grid spacing. So how you will edit grid spacing? Just right click on the grid line, then click on the grid, edit grid data, and then click on the modify and show system. From here, you will change your grid spacing, fine. So the display grid as it is actually uh, shown in the form of ordinates. So keep in mind this thing, ordinate is my year from the origin and the origin it location A, fine. And the rest of the distances are my year from this A point and it is cumulative. You can see it is zero, then five, 10, 15, 20, 25 and 30. These are the cumulative value. Now we will edit 
change the spacing according to the requirement. Now come toward the example number two. From here you can see this grid line at location zero and the second line is at location two. Third grid line is at location six plus two, eight. And fourth grid line at location 10. Fine. And fifth grid line at location 20. Sixth grid line at location 25. And the last one at location 30. Now we will edit the spacing according to this. Okay, this is at zero, the second grid line at location two, third grid line at location eight, fourth one is at location 10, fifth one placed at location 20, and six and seven at 25 and 30. Click on OK, then OK. Now the grids spacing are edit according to the requirement. Now we will define different properties. Click on the define Then first of all you will define your material property. Click on the materials. Click on the new materials. Then change the name from here concrete for KSI. Right? From material type, change material type from steel to concrete and change your unit. Okay, now enter the different properties from here. It is actually 36,000 and it is 0.2 poison, which is 0.2, and this is 4 KSI. Click on OK. The concrete 4 KSI is defined. Now define frame section. Okay, the section property for this example two is 12 cross 14, right? Then define frame section, click on the frame, define then section property, then frame section, add new property. From frame section property type, change steel to concrete. And in our case, the cross section is rectangular one. So click on the rectangular, then change the name of this section. It is 12 cross 14. Okay, and change the material type, which is concrete 4 KSI. Then enter the dimensions. The depth is 14 by 12 because the unit in feet, and width is 12 by 12 right and concrete reinforcement change design type from column to B click on OK OK now this frame section is defined now define load pattern OK in this example number two all the loads are dead load so there is no need to define any other load pattern so the dead load is already defined okay in the load cases uh, dead load case is already there if you want to add another load case you can add how click on the add new load case so from here you can give name to case one and it is static and the inner type is also linear so from here you can add dead load twice fine okay then define the load combinations click on the define then load combination then add new combo okay change the name of this combination 1.2 for example it is 1.2 dead load only right so add 
1.2 dead load because there is no other load so only dead load so it is 1.2 dead load click on ok ok fine now you are in position to draw your element so click on this draw tool and change the section property which is already one property there so it is by default selected beam 12 class 14 so draw this element point to point okay and now assign joints at this location it is hinge supported click this particular point then go to the assign then joints then click on restrain then keep it in support sign joints restrain and it is row support now we will apply different loads from figure this is the load and it is applied between grade 2 and 3 so first of all we apply this load at location 1 there is 2k per foot load is applied and at location 2 it is 1k per foot load applied so i will apply this load at this part particular section so first of all you will select the section where you want to apply the load so this is the section i select this one and then go to the assign then click on the frame loads then distribute it right and it is a dead load so it is change from here it is already dead load then it is force in the gravity direction now from this trapezoidal load you will apply that particular uniformly varying load okay while putting the distance and the loads accordingly so in this example this particular load can be applied by entering load at two location at this location and at this location right i will consider this location zero then it is the other location right so how you will apply this load so at distance zero and what is this distance zero this distance zero is represented by this point which is point b this is the location of this zero distance at this zero location the load is how much it is two k per foot now what about the other point because we can draw this load by two points only because the load is varying at two location two points and the second point is which is the c location this location fine so what is this second location distance keep in mind from here this is the relative distance from n i means if it if this option is checked it means that the distance will be measured from this location and also in the fraction form means an out of one so what is this location the total distance is six feet this frame is of six feet distance so how you will determine this fraction so it is actually six by six fine and at one location actually this is a one location and the load at this one location is one rest there is no need to use this three point number three and four so only this one this two point can draw this particular load click on ok so the load is applied right now come toward this load for this particular load you required four points right so this is started from fourth grade point to the fifth one so first of all i will select this particular frame element right this is actually the element between grid point d and e so click on this one and then go to the assign then frame loads distributed load now we will put distance and load to draw a particular load given in the example if you can see from here we required four points to draw this load what are the points 
this is one this is second this is third and this is fourth why because the load is varying at four location at this particular location and we call it it is a zero location at zero location the load is one sorry at the zero location the load is zero and at this location in this particular location the load is one and at this location the load is again become two and at the final location the load is zero so what will be the distance now and what will be the load so we will enter that in the trapezoidal load option okay at distance zero the load is also zero at distance and how you will determine this distance two okay. this distance two is determined actually the formula for that is distance from the origin and for origin for that is this one right divide by total distance of the member fine so the distance is the from from the origin to this particular point and total distance is the total distance of this member so now if you want to calculate this distance so what is the distance from the origin to this point it is actually 2 and what is the total distance the total distance of this member is 10 so this is how you will determine uh, the distance to the point 2 fine now come here at point 2 the distance is 2 divided by 10 right and at this location the load is 1 kip per foot and now how to determine the third distance it's very simple again the distance from origin to this third point is 8 8 divided by 10 right to the third point okay distance to the third point will be 8 divided by 10 so what is load at third location it is 2 k per foot and the final point is the distance from the origin to this point divided by the total distance and both are same so it become 1 and load at this particular location is 0 so now you have defined the load which is a trapezoidal load and you click on ok so the load that you want to apply is actually applied on the particular section okay now you we are in position to apply the last load that is the point load okay that is 30 kip now select the point where you want to apply the point load then go to the assign then joint load then forces okay when you click on the forces so this uh, window will appear uh, again there is a load pattern name you will change load pattern accordingly and then you can change your unit as per your requirement okay loads direction these are the load direction right as per the SAP uh, the location the load direction in our case is Z direction but negative to Z direction because in the SAP upward direction is positive and downward is negative for downward load you will put negative sign with the load that is 30 kip and the z direction right 30 kip load is applied when you apply a point load so all other uniformly varying load or uniformly distributed load will disappear so how you can you can make it visible again so just go to the display option then click on the show load assignments at joint location the loads are all, all already visible so you have to make it visible at frame location only click on this point and click on ok so our loads will be appeared at a time right now we are in position to run analysis so click on this 
run analysis or you can also press F5 to run analysis. Click on the run analysis. Now click on the run analysis. Run now. Save your file with example 2. Your analysis is completed. Now you are in position to see different results. From this option, you can check the reactions at joints. So click on this. So from here, you can see uh, reaction because of dead load only. You can also see uh, because of case one and also from because of 1.2 dead load. Click on the 1.2 dead load. Click on OK. So it will display the joint reaction. If you want to see the shear force and bending moment, you can again access it from here. Click on the this icon, then frame and cables. Okay. From here, you can check M33. And if you want to see show values on the diagram as well, so click on this, check this option and click on OK. Okay. This will display the shear bending moment diagram. Now for the shear force diagram, again, you will click on this frame and cables. So from here, you can check shear 2 to OK. So this will display a shear force diagram. And this is all about example 2. Uh, this is example number 3. Uh, it is also a continuous beam. Uh, which is subjected to differing uh, loading including the uniformly varying load and the point load along with these load it is also subjected to uh, bending movement as well right and this beam uh, is uh, having two different cross section the cross section one one is uh, 14 cross 18 inches and the cross section two is uh, 14 cross 14 inches right and the other properties uh, are given also and I consider that all the loads applied on this beam is dead load, right? Now I will open the SEP 2000 and will solve this example. Again, first of all, you will uh, go to create a new model, then go to the file, then click on the new model. And from here, you will set your unit according to your requirement. So all the units here is kilonewton in the kilonewton and meter. So set unit to kilonewton and meter. Then click on the grid only. Okay. In here, you will uh, decide number of grid lines in X and Y and Z direction. So the number of grid line in X direction will be decided from the figure. Let's see the figure. Okay, how many grid lines we required in X direction? So as I told you that you will provide the grid line in the direct uh, in, in the point where there is change of any cross section, there is uh, where you want to apply load and where the load is varying, right? Or where you want to apply uh, as a certain support, fine. In this case, we, we required a grid line at this location because there is support and we also required grid line at this location because there is change of cross section and there is also <clears throat> load applied uniformly varying load and a pointed load right we required a grid line at this location because there is a support condition as well as a bending moment is applied again we required grid line at this location and finally at this location how many grid line we have one, two, three, four, and five. So we required five grid line in next direction. Right? So again, go to the new model, click on the grid only, and set here five. Right? 
and there is no need of grid line in y direction and z direction okay i will just put 5 meter spacing later on we can edit this spacing fine again change the plane to xz where you can uh, see the different grid points and now we will edit grid line according to the structure okay this first one first grid line at location 0 and the second grid line at location 6 third grid line at location 10 fourth grid line at location 15 and the final one is at location 20 right first one is at 6 0 then 6 10 15 and 20 so the total distance is 20 meter right so we will edit grid line accordingly from here first grid line is 0 the second one is at 6 third one is 10 location fourth at 15 and the final location 20 click on ok now grid lines are added accordingly now next step is to define the material property click on the define then materials add new materials from here change the material name to concrete 4 ksi okay now change the unit according to the requirement keep inches then change your materials type from steel to concrete so this is 36000 and it is 0.2 and compressive strength is 4 ksi okay, click on ok uh, now i will define the frame section properties Okay, actually the frame section property in inches, so you will change units from here from in kilonewton meter to inches. Right now, go to the define, then section properties, and frame section. Keep in mind we have two different frame sections. So first of all, we will define first frame section made of concrete, and it is a rectangular one. And we give name it to beam 14 plus 18, right? And the depth, sorry, select material from here, and the, it is made of concrete 4 ksi. And depth of this is 18, and width is width is 14. Fine. Change the concrete reinforcement from column design to the beam design. And click OK. So this is defined. Now you can also add copy of this beam. So add copy of this property. Just change name from to 14 cross 14. And then depth is also 14 and width is 14. Click on OK. So these two beam sections are defined click on ok now define load pattern as i told you earlier that the load is subjected to dead load only so the load pattern is by default defined here which is dead load so there is no need to define again so click on ok then define load cases so I want to run uh, dead load case only. So there is no need to define load case. Then go to the load combination. So load combination is a is 1.2 dead load. So define that 1.2 dead load. So add 1.2 dead load. Click on OK. 
so load combination is defined now we are in position to draw this beam so click on the draw frame element and first member is actually uh, made of from this location to the first location from location 1 to 2 uh, it is uh, made of section 12 cross 18 so from this location to this the section is 14 to, to 18 so we will select from this beam uh, instead of 14 to 14 it will be 14 to 18 so this section is from this location to the B location right now after drawing this area this frame section change the section property to 14 to 14 and draw rest of the right. this portion is 14 cross 18 and the other location the other frame section properties is 14 cross 14 right now we are in position to assign joints at this location the joint is fixed support so select this location and then go to the assign then joints then restraints and click on the fixed support click on ok so fixed support is assigned then a roller support is at this location so this is the third location so actually this is at this third location and also the roller support at the end so roller support is also here in the location e so assign roller support to this two joints go to the assign then joints then restraints and click on the roller support right the supports condition are completed now we are in position to apply different loads <clears throat> first of all we will apply this uniformly varying load we call it triangular load and uh, how we will apply this we will first of all select the frame section okay we will select this particular frame section then go to the assign then frame loads in the frame loads we will go to the distributed load right and uh, the load pattern name is dead load we are just implying the dead load here so from the trapezoidal load you will we can apply this particular load at distance zero the load is how much it is 30 kilonewton per meter keep in mind from here you will change your unit according to kilonewton meter and you will apply at zero the load is 30 kilonewton now at location last location which is actually one location and the load at this location is zero right click ok so this load is applied right we can change the unit to kilonewton so that it will show in kilonewton meter right okay next load is applied at this edge again which is 200 kilonewton now we will apply load at this particular joint which is 30 kilonewton sorry 200 kilonewton uh, select this joint then go to the assign then joint loads then forces from here you will apply load at global z direction but in opposite to that one uh, you will put negative sign 200 okay the load 200 is applied over here now next load is at it is the, actually the bending moment it is applied at this location it is the third location which is 90 kilonewton meter so how you will apply this bending moment so for application of this bending moment first of all you will uh, check you will analyze the direction of that this bending moment by using right hand rule by right hand, right hand rule if you encircle if you rotate your fingers in the direction of this arrow right if you rotate your fingers in the direction of this bending moment the thumb will give you the direction of bending moment right okay 
if we apply uh, right hand rule to this particular bending moment so the thumb is toward the screen and toward the screen direction is actually z direction sorry actually y direction in the case of sap right so here the direction of bending moment is toward y and it is toward positive y right so we will now apply this bending moment 90 kN meter in the y direction at this particular location okay now i will apply uh, this 90 kN meter bending moment at this location which is location c so what you will do you will just select this location then go to the assign then joint load then forces okay from here you will enter bending moment about global y direction but positive value keep in mind this this is uh, already here so you will make it zero otherwise the same uh, along with the bending moment the 200 kilonewton point load will also apply at this location so that's why make this force zero right and just keep 90 kilo kilonewton meter low bending moment at this location click on ok so you cannot see the bending moment because uh, this is xz plane and the xz plane there is no bending moment so the bending moment is applied in the y direction so you can see this in x y right or you can also see this in the z in the 3d fine okay now again there is another point load located low applied at this location we will apply now 150 kN load at this location first of all you will select this location then go to the assign then joint load then forces okay at here you will also make this bending moment zero and just apply a 150 kN point load uh, in the opposite direction to z so we will keep negative side click on ok so 150 kN load is applied in order to visible all different loads applied on this beam you will just go to the display then show load assignments uh, loads at joint is al already shown so keep click on the frame cable only then ok so all the loads are visible if you convert your view into 3d so you can see there is a 90 kilo newton meter bending moment and there is a 200 kilo newton point load at this location and there is a uniformly varying load as well and 150 kilo newton point at this location right now we are in position to run analysis now click on the run analysis and run now Save this file with example 3. Now analysis is completed. Now we are positioned to check uh, different results. If you want to check the joints reaction, so click on this and then joints. And for combination 1.2 dead load, click on OK. So these are the reactions. Fine. Now, if you want to check the pending moment and shear force diagram, then first of all for M33, if you want to see uh, values on the diagram, to click on this show values on the diagram, click OK. So this is actually the bending moment diagram, right? If you want to see the shear force diagram, so click again on this one and click on the share to two so this will give you the share force diagram if you want to see all the different responses at a time so click on the particular frame so right click on the particular element so this will give you the complete result it will give you directly uh, the distance uh, load the load applied per unit meter and then the shear force the bending movement and deflection as well right Okay, this is all about example number three. And with this example, 
the tutorial number one is concluded. Thank you so much.